I'm Amanda Rosani with Digital CXO. I'm here today with Wade Ellery. He is the field CTO of Radiant Logic. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. I'm having a wonderful time today. It's a sunny day in California, so I'm happy. Great. We've been getting a lot of rain here in Texas, which is much needed. So can you share a little bit about Radiant Logic and the services that you provide? Definitely. So Radiant Logic has actually been in this space for a couple of decades. Uh, we have very large customers across both the public sector and the, uh, the federal government, because what we do is we address a major problem, which is that identity information, the data you use to feed your access management systems, your governance platforms, your PAM platforms, that information is scattered throughout the organization. And in larger environments, that becomes very difficult to bring that information together and to really make it actionable and to get value from that data and make good decisions about security and compliance in your organization. So we're the abstraction layer that lets you gather all that information together, process it, and deliver it to the endpoints that need it with as little effort as possible and as flexible a model as you can. Great. So I have a lot of conversations about how to use customer data for the user experience, but I don't have as many about harnessing the ID data for the business processes and uh, business efficiency. So can mm -hmm. you share a little bit more about the importance of being able to harness all types of data, especially this identity data, and um, how can businesses use it to improve? Definitely. And if you think about the idea of a business, a business's primary function is to generate revenue, is to continue to grow as an organization. And so you look for opportunities where you can generate more revenue. And, and that's applications and systems and processes within the organization where the employees of that company are contributing to the success of the organization. What you want to do is you want to make that as easy as possible for them. You want to get them access to the systems and applications they need to do their job as easily as you can with as least amount of friction. It should be almost a seamless experience. But at the same time, we're working in a world now where there's a lot of dangerous scenarios out there. There's a lot of threats to the environment. Security has now become even more paramount than it has before. Uh, the amount of breaches that have taken place in the past decade have really highlighted the need to secure the environment. But that's a, that's a, a push and a pull scenario. The more secure you make things, the harder it is to work. So if you actually have a rich environment where you know a tremendous amount about your users, your employees, in terms of attributes and information that you can use to make decisions about their access, you can do a lot of enablement in the background that lets them do their work very efficiently, but allows you to secure the environment in a way that protects you from internal and external threats and gives you a compliance with regulations without being an onerous weight on the operations of the, of the company itself. So as things get even more remote and hybrid in nature, how do businesses go about finding this solution and being able to be safer and uh, in considering all the cybersecurity issues? What do you suggest? Well, that's an excellent point. And that's really kind of this, this uh, perfect storm that we've seen in the last uh, few years. One, the, the move to external working uh, scenarios where I'm, I'm remote from my organization. I used to come into a building that was behind a firewall. I was in my castle. I was safe. Everything inside the building was, was trusted. Now I'm remote. Um, I have to authenticate myself. But even more than just authenticating myself, I need to authorize that what I'm trying to do right now is something that's reasonable. If it's two o'clock in the morning and I'm accessing financial records from South Korea, um, it's probably not a good thing to do to authorize that unless the travel system has notified you that the CFO is actually in South Korea. It's 10 o'clock in the morning there and he has to make financial statements to Wall Street on Monday. That's a perfectly reasonable scenario. You don't want to block big business, but you do want to be able to secure the environment. So that idea of knowing more about the user than just their ID and their password is critical to providing that interaction that allows the user to have the same productivity they had inside the office, regardless of where they happen to be located. And as we move towards a zero trust architecture of less 
provisioning access in a static way and doing more dynamic assignment and authorization, that becomes even more critical, but allows us also to narrow the attack plane so that although I have most of my workforce remote, they're not exposing me to more risk as an organization because I can build a little wall around each individual now where I used to build walls around the company. Uh, so as more and more businesses digitally transform, I would think that this becomes a bigger issue. And I know there's a lot of key technologies out there right now advancing at a rapid rate. Would you suggest companies looking at some of these key technologies for their digital transformation efforts and, and harnessing this data? Definitely. And what we're seeing in our space and, and what we recognize is that we have access to a tremendous amount of information. The most exciting thing that we're seeing right now, and it's a bit of a buzzword, but I honestly have to say it is the buzzword with more meat on the bone that I've seen in a long time, and that's AI. Um, in the last six months alone, that whole space has transformed itself. What we're seeing now is the ability to look at large sets of identity data and ask intelligent questions and get back real answers. The challenge in the past used to be that it was the forest for the trees. It was such a large amount of information that I couldn't intelligently even understand if my information was accurate or what was missing or what would be a good uh, value to fill in a blank. Now I can start to actually put these tools to work to make sure the information I'm making decisions on is actually the information that is accurate, sourced from truth. And now I can watch this data in real time and make sure that an intruder or anyone internally acting outside of policy is stopped immediately and that information is controlled in a way that I can be much more secure. So I would really look at implementing tools that can help you clean up your data, get a more accurate view of that information because everything you're going to do forward from that point to leverage that data to make good policy decisions on access is gonna be based on how good that data is that you start with. Absolutely, which brings a, another question. AI, yes, it's definitely the big thing right now. Everybody's looking at it and how to harness it for automation. So one question I do have, though, is can you trust the AI? I know we have a lot of issues <laughs> right now um, in that regard, um, you know, from ethical standpoint to uh, hallucinations and bias. So um, where do you think we are at, at this point with AI? And do you foresee it taking away any jobs down the road with the things that it can automate? Well, I think in the identity management space, what we're looking at right now, really it's, it's to some degree more of a gift than a, than a, uh, a, a challenge. Um, but I personally worry about the future of mankind, given that we're finally building computers smarter than we are and what they'll do in the weekends, we don't know. Um, but inside the space that we're working in now, we're, we're able to narrow the focus of the, of the information down to what uh, actual data we're looking at and ask specific questions of the system to be able to verify that the data is accurate, that it's correct. There is a lot of checking that needs to be done and out of band auditing. And that's one of the, the benefits of our integration with Brainwave now. Brainwave GRC is a, a compliance and analytics tool that lets you look at not only what you intended to create in your environment with your policies, but in the real world, what got manifested when you did that process, when you wrote that algorithm, when you provisioned that particular endpoint, what does the real world look like and how do those two match up? So I think it's really important to check the work of any, any automated system you put into play. The challenge of unintended consequences are always onerous in these scenarios. But it does give us the ability to look across really broad sets of data and look for policies, look for outliers, look for anomalies, look for the, the man in the shadows, which has been the challenge in the past. And I think in that area, if we use it responsibly and we really manage how we're implementing it, we're going to get more benefit than we're going to get the downside. But there definitely is a need, I think, for um, a layer of, of ethics and, uh, and management in this space that I hope comes to, into play. Um, we're, we're still very young, but it's growing at such a pace right now that I don't know that we'll catch up uh, quickly enough in some areas. 
For businesses that are kind of behind and are just now digitally transforming in a variety of ways, what advice do you have for them as to where to start and what to consider when they're looking at identity data and uh, user data? The first thing I say is it's okay. You don't have to be at the bleeding edge right now. Where you are is great. You've made a lot of investments already in the infrastructure you have. And what we've done as an industry is we've finally been, I think, honest with the customer that zero trust or policy-based access control, the new model of security we're moving towards is not a product. It's not one project. There is not one button to push to make it happen. It's a journey. And what we're doing now is we're evolving your security platform over a period of time towards a better and better model starting with what you have today. So the key is look at what you have today. You've implemented infrastructure, you have data. Can you get your arms around it? Can you bring that data together and start looking at the forest and the trees at the same time? And a platform like Radiant Logic provides you with that ability to first get visibility to what's out there. And then what's the quality of that information? How certain am I that this data is good? How many people do I have that have left the organization that are still have accounts laying around in my system? What kind of group memberships don't have any owners or descriptions? Simple things like that cleanup start to incrementally move you towards a more, more secure environment. So as you move forward, you're both cleaning up what you have and then bringing in more sources of information incrementally to build up this repository of data. And each step is sort of like a, a going to the gym. Every time you go, you get stronger. It's easier to do the next step. So this is a process. Don't worry about the fact it's no one's bad decision that got you where you are today. Believe me, you're not behind the curve, but do start to incrementally start to make adjustments. Look to see what you can do today with what you have and discovering, understanding, and starting to clean up the data you have right now is gonna enable everything else you do. Very helpful information. Well, I wanna thank you, Wade, so much for coming on the show today and giving your insights. I appreciate the opportunity and thank you very much. Thank you. And to our listeners, be looking for the next Digital CXO interview on digitalcxo.com.